We are a civic tech project focused on making local policy information more accessible and bite-sized. We are really happy to celebrate Open Data Week in 2022. This is our second year returning to present our project. And this year we'll take a little different case study of how our data can be used to contextualize other open data sources. So we want to thank the New York City Mayor's Office of Analytics and Beta NYC for hosting us today. Before we dive in, a little introduction on who we are. I am Sarah Sachs. I am a data scientist and an adjunct lecturer. And with me, I have Brandon Pachuca, who is an urban data scientist and web developer. And we have a team around Block Party that has helped us to develop this presentation and find these different case studies and excerpts that we'll be looking into later today. But first, have you ever attended a community board meeting? I see some, some hands and um, perhaps some nods in the virtual crowd. That's great to, <laughs> great to see. But maybe not everyone has attended a community board or even know what they might be. Some of us have attended. Why are they important? Community boards discuss policies, initiatives, priorities, which impact our day-to-day -day lives. They act as the community's voice when brokering conversations with state and local governments, nonprofit agencies, and other organizations. However, community board meetings might be inaccessible to some, perhaps because of work, childcare, school, and just life in general. For these and many more reasons, it might be difficult to attend meetings each week or know what gets discussed. For this presentation, we analyzed data from the last six months of all community board transcripts Block Party has in our archive. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we got that data and what Block Party is doing with it. But for this presentation, we have 973 community board meetings just from the last six months. So a lot of the context in this presentation, we'll just be looking at what gets discussed over the last six months. And overall, there was 973 community board meetings that, that we have recorded and we have their full transcript on Block Party's public archive. And just over this time duration, the average community board meeting, just waiting for the slide, lasted just about two hours long. This is on average. And that being said, the longest community board meeting from the last six months was six hours and 19 minutes and 13 seconds long. And this was from Brooklyn Community Board One, and it was a combined public hearing and board meeting about Williamsburg River Ring proposal. Uh, that was eventually approved for rezoning in the meeting. So we talk about these different statistics just to emphasize that these are not necessarily accessible. It's important to say that democracy is not a spectator sport. And in order to become engaged in this local representation, we must become informed. And that's really where Block Party comes in, um, where we imagine ourselves being a resource for community to stay informed about what's going on and therefore potentially engage more with their local community and really try to bolster this representation of what voices are heard in community board meetings, because just knowing what they do and what was previously discussed is a step to reaching that goal. And from our journey of starting in 2020, when community board meetings became virtual, which is a whole other topic for discussion of how, because of the events of the pandemic, how community board transitioned to a virtual platform enabled even Block Party to exist, to start to create an archive of all the community board transcripts. But since then, uh, we've been going strong for now two years or such, which is wild to think about. And here are some just recent achievements of what we have done over the time compared to last year presenting Open Data Week. We were published in a Brooklyn paper talking about how we use AI. I also, I went to lots of different community board meetings to try to engage with different representatives and district managers. And now a couple of community board district managers, mostly in Queens, use Block Party to help create a full transcript of their meeting recording. We're also, we were featured in Cornell Tech Hub's Rebooting New York City report which was really exciting to see. And that I would recommend anyone to check that out because there was lots of really interesting projects and initiatives that this report covered. And we are pretty honored to be mentioned in it. So let's talk a little bit about how it's made, what it is we're doing before we get into a case study where we'll talk about how we use this data to contextualize 311 service requests. This is just a very high level overview of how it works, where any community board that is publishing their meetings on YouTube which is another part of our role is to help promote this platform as a resource that's additive for any community board to leverage. And we use 
any recording on YouTube that has closed captioning enabled, which again is helping you make your meeting accessible for anyone who might have hearing impairments as well and translating to other languages. So we grab all these closed captioning texts. We use different tools of artificial intelligence and natural language processing to transform these closed captioning into a readable full transcript. And once we have that full transcript, we can start to extract key sentences that could potentially give a representation of what gets discussed. So we think of our users as skimmers, swimmers, and divers, where some folks might want to read the full transcript and, and peruse different parts throughout, while others might just want to have a 500-word summary. So we use different technology to create this summary, and we automatically send that as a weekly email for you to subscribe to your local community board. And that helps to just be able to stay in the know of exactly verbatim what got discussed. And lastly, we also tag these different meetings with relevant topics and classify the meeting using this taxonomy that we'll talk about shortly. To cover our bases of which community boards we have access to their transcripts, this is a visualization to show which community boards out of the, I think, 59 community boards total that are available on YouTube. And we start to see this kind of disproportion leaning towards Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn compared to the other boroughs where you see on the map, even just on our landing page, where you have this consolidation of community boards that are even on YouTube. And therefore, we have access to exactly what was discussed. When I mentioned this taxonomy, these are some of the topics we would classify a meeting under. And a meeting can talk about a variety of lots of different things. One meeting gets classified just to one topic. There can be a variety. And this taxonomy is classified under environmental governance and, in, and social related topics. And it was inspired by the statement of community district needs. And we use this taxonomy also to help extract those key sentences rather than finding a sentence of, can you please unmute yourself in a meeting? We would find something about education or sanitation. So we use all these different topics and key terms to try to extract some of that key information that might be very interesting to people to know about. Thinking about this taxonomy and how it applies to all the different meetings over the last six months, we can actually start to now gather some trends of topics being discussed and how they correlate or happen in tandem with each other. So this is just a visualization. The bigger the square means the topic happens in tandem with another topic. And I know that the font's pretty small, but we'll talk through just one example that was interesting about how anytime a meeting that talks about waterfront, there was also correlation with talking about budget and land use, quality of life and safety. On the other side of that, thinking about how budget can also relate to all these other types of topics. So this type of analysis can be used to gain like a high level understanding of, of what topics relate to each other, thinking about how education relates to different aspects around health and safety and transportation. And if anyone has questions, feel free to interrupt us along the way. But here is an example email you might receive if you were subscribed to Community Board 5. And this contains that summary highlights that I, I discussed previously, where we automatically send this every week and it connects you directly back to the full transcript. So if there's something that seems interesting, you can explore further and also directly link back to the YouTube meeting recording where we derived the text from. And this is a little um, preview of what our platform looks like. You can find us at blockparty.studio. And this is what that public archive would look like, where you see these different topics that we would classify a meeting as. We show those top words of what gets discussed most often, and then that meeting highlights. So this public archive dates back to 2015, and you can use this toolbar to search and filter for different community board meetings, different date ranges. So if you have a general understanding of what it is you're looking for, this is a public resource where you can explore exactly what was discussed over time from community board meetings. And this visualization just shows how many meetings there really are and over time. And this giant spike since 2020 and community boards transitioning to YouTube, where overall we have just under 3,000 community board trans in this archive. And because of this resource, we can now start to compare it to contextualize other open data resources, which I'll pass it off to Brandon to talk through our case study for 
our open day-to-day presentation. Great. Thank you, Sarah. So yeah, we wanted to focus on how New York City 301 service request information can be joined to block party transcript data to help contextualize board conversations. 301 service requests can be aggregated to act as a signal to identify pressing challenges in the community. By pairing this with transcript data, we can compare what is being discussed in a, in a community board compared to what is being reported. So to start, we queried 1,092,335 service requests from 301 from the past six months through the NYC Open Data Portal. This number is reduced from a comprehensive total, just being that we did some data cleaning to drop certain requests that didn't have location or community board. And then we spatially joined that information to the community boards. And when looking at the top service requests for the last six months per community board, we can see various trends trying to show. So noise from helicopters is being reported in Manhattan, infrastructural challenges with heat and hot water in the Bronx, illegal parking in Brooklyn and Queens, and missed garbage collection in Staten Island. So you can start seeing across all the different community boards the different kinds of reports that are occurring. So by spatially joining the 301 service request to community board transcript data, we can create a composite view, which enables us to compare them against one another. So we have around 1 million 301 service requests. And as Sarah mentioned, 973 community board transcripts over the last six months that we joined together. And just for reference, the 973 community board transcripts we analyzed is approximately 1,779 hours or 74 days worth of meetings. So that is a lot of time spent in meetings. As Sarah pointed out earlier, that we had some meetings that lasted six hours and on average, uh, almost two hours. So this is a lot of content to dig through to try to find what's a meaningful story and start to make, make sense of it all. So this, again, is the block party taxonomy that Sarah discussed earlier, which we applied to classify 301 service complaint types to enable us to compare if community board means we're addressing complaints reported by 311. And so this diagram shows how we map the 301 service requests to our block party taxonomy. For example, the complaint of missent collection is classified under sanitation. Each bar is sized proportional to its respective category. For example, illegal parking has more proportional complaints than noise residential per community board, whereas transportation is more frequent topic than quality of life in the transcripts we analyzed. And what you can see here is that the heat and hot water has a larger or high frequency of complaints, but it's not discussed heavily as a topic of utilities across community boards. So this is, we can start to see what is being reported by 311 comparatively what is being discussed in community board transcripts. And we want to caveat that these mappings are our approach to these classifications. It can be said that if you ask 10 people to classify these topics, you might get 11 or even 15 different answers. So there is, there is our assumptions and potentially our bias in these classifications, and we would love more input on how best to classify this to make it more robust and meaningful. I think just adding a little bit more context here with why we thought to compare 3 and one to community board meetings is around how in a perfect world, the community board should represent the needs of the community that they represent and thinking how like the short term needs would be voiced in a 3 and one request that a longer term solution should perhaps be addressed by the community board. So it's kind of comparing different aspects of similar challenges that would relate and trying to see, is there this representation from community board meetings? Absolutely. And then we looked at any trends that existed on a borough basis. We can see that transportation is the highest for Manhattan, Queens, and Brooklyn, while utilities is a top reported topic in the Bronx, while Staten Island's top topic is sanitation. What is also interesting is the third topic for all the boroughs except Staten Island is housing, showing that as a consistent high priority topic across all the boroughs. And also the silhouette of each graph is somewhat similar. And if you look at Queens in particular, you see a sharp drop off to start looking at the transportation related complaints comparatively to all the other different topics that we classified, showing that transportation is disproportionately higher than any other topic in Queens. And just noting that the Y scales on these graphs in particular are, are disproportionate to each other because we wanted to look at total frequency of 301 requests. Uh, there is an opportunity to, to look at this information proportional to population and or population density as well. Uh, any questions so far before we, we move forward? There's a couple of questions if you didn't see in the chat. Oh, sure. Did or we analyze meeting minutes? They're also online. Candidly, I think that the biggest aspect of what Block Party is doing is that it scales to all community board meetings because we're deriving everything directly from YouTube. So if we had to analyze all the meetings, please let me know if there is a central place where all of those meeting minutes exist. And then that would be a very interesting way to compare if 
even I do meeting minutes reflect exactly what was said at the full board meeting. We provide this transparency into exactly what was said without changing things in any, but it would be interesting to reflect that. So if, if that portal exists, I think that's even just one value add of what Block Party is doing is that it's this central place that scales across all community boards. Jody, let me know if you had other questions for that one. I Sorry, I turned my video on, but I'm still drinking my morning coffee. Yeah, it's uh, I'm in the Bronx and getting my board to do Zoom, it was a big challenge and they don't live stream to YouTube. They really are low tech. So that's the only source. You can request the Zoom meetings because they are required to save them and do transcripts. Hmm. But it would be really interesting to come up with a way to fill in all those other dots that you had where there were no YouTubes. Agreed. We worked with some community boards in Queens to actually, they launched a tech committee or subcommittee, and we were able to work with them just to explain how by putting your meetings on YouTube, we could then provide that full transcript and hopefully um, alleviate any manual efforts that are done to create that full transcript as well. So and it's, it's free to use YouTube and there's no limit on storage. So feel free to, to reach out after. We'd be happy to talk with any representative of your district. Sounds great. Thank you. Awesome. So I see another question from Rob Roberto explaining the process of normalizing the meeting transcripts into a data set that can be analyzed and joined with the 301 service requests. And yeah, so it's definitely we're taking this approach of using that taxonomy that we showed. So I'll just go back um, a few slides because we are taking this broad brush stroke of saying these community board meetings talk about these different topics and having this count of how often these different topics are discussed. So if there's lots of meetings that talk about parks, that would be a meeting that would rise to the top as that topic. So that one's a little bit more just like generalization because community board meetings talk about lots of different granular topics. And this is just like a, a higher level overview and definitely a simplification for sure. So by simplifying what topics get discussed in community board meetings, we can then compare that to the service request or complaint that's put on 311. We aggregate the top complaints and then we apply this same taxonomy to label something like illegal parking as transportation related issue. So that then we could start to try to compare if, if illegal parking is a consistent issue that gets voiced in 301 service requests, then we could give this comparison to, is this community board talking about transportation often in their meetings? Yeah, and if you go to the next slide, Sarah, this is, uh, so the left-hand side of this diagram in particular, the 301 top service requests, these, we looked at all the, the community boards and aggregated all their top requests and then showed how they map to the topics of the block party tax line. So as Sarah said, we we created like, a, we did this mapping that allowed us to do that one-to-one -one comparison by adapting the 301 service complaint type, which is one of the fields in the 301 service request and adapting it to the block party tax on to allow us to do that comparison. And then the, if hopefully that answers your question. Or yeah, thank you. Fantastic. And then the, the next question by Hugo is, are the videos limited to YouTube or are other video platforms supported? We have seen many community boards use Facebook and different on the online web portals. YouTube is our current pipeline, but we are curious to see what the pipeline could look like to automatically grab the videos from other platforms to to ingest into Block Party. I just haven't uh, haven't gotten there and haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, we actually looked at Facebook because a lot of community boards were on Facebook, but they don't have the same closed captioning that's automatically created by YouTube. And that's what we depend on for creating the full transcript. So even just accessing those closed captioning would not be feasible for Facebook. And maybe, Brandon, if you wanted to answer this last question, I'm grabbing our email address for how okay. to next contact us. Yes. Yeah. Sarah will, will post our email address to contact us in the chat. And then the next question, I see some discussion on Manhattan. Can you minutes online? And then on this slide, there are no axes. I assume there are counts. Yes, these are all frequency counts. I've mentioned. So the left hand side is weighted by the total uh the left hand side is weighted by the total complaint types divided by the total amount of complaints per that community board. And the right hand side for the block tire taxonomy is the number of mentions divided by the total number of mentions or total number of topics being discussed in that community board or for that particular transcript. 
So that's how the weighting is for each each axis on the y axis for the 301 top service request and the block party taxonomy, respectively. So the relative to the to themselves, respectively, of the total counts per community board per transcript or per 301 service component. Great. Awesome. Thanks for pointing out on our website. Uh, we have to update with our contact info. Um, again, this is really a passion project and it's just a civic tech initiative with more resources. We would love to develop a website with lots of different features. We're a lean team and we do the best we can. So I just sent the uh, our email address. We're also on Twitter and pretty active there. So feel free to reach out to us there as well. I think we'll have some links at the end, but perhaps moving forward, Brandon? Sure. Yeah. So I think one, one more slide forward. So let me just close out this chat bubble. <laughs> so we can look at the top topics identified in community board transcripts spatially, cycling through each to spatially locate where each topic is being discussed the most and the least. So I will stay here for a minute to allow everyone to see the different topics and the distribution of the heat map. And, and while you're looking, uh, feel free to ask any questions, but I'll just talk through some of the, the points that we found. So infrastructure near the waterfront and Battery Park is heavily discussed. Housing is being discussed often in Manhattan compared to the other boroughs. Some of the most frequent topics are safety, transportation, and quality of life. And where are some of the lowest distributions that we've seen for topics is around elections and human services. And so you can see here the distribution of discussion of topics that are being shown. So there's quality of youth. And then the next one here, uh, looking at youth distribution and budget. So this really, uh, using this topics distribution, it allows us to see where are these being discussed relative to, to every community board. Yeah, I feel like there's more case studies to be had because this is a public archive, if there is some type of topic that's interesting to you, like why is infrastructure being talked about so much in CB1 all the way at the tip of, of Manhattan? So being able to use this to to explore further, I think that there's a lot of different ways this could be looked at. So here's a breakdown of topics across the 973 transcripts we analyzed over the last six months. So safety, as mentioned before, is the most frequent topic along with quality of life and transportation. We can also see parks, infrastructure, housing, and youth all are all neck and neck for topics being discussed in community boards. So this gives us a breakdown of all the different topics that we looked at for the community boards for those 973. This is a really interesting map. So here we compare 301 service requests to block party transcript data to see how they align across all five boroughs. We can see that the heat and hot water have a high proportion of complaints in the Bronx and Manhattan. And we were curious about heat and hot water since it was reported often as a complaint type, but discussed the least in the community board meetings from what we saw in the last six months. I just want to talk a little bit more about how this graph can be interpreted as well, because we use these different colors to classify using those topics from the taxonomy. So even you can see in, in Queens, a lot of discussion around transportation, specifically illegal parking is discussed often. And that's also a similar trend in parts of Brooklyn as well. And thinking how this then compares to what's getting discussed in Manhattan and then in the Bronx. So based on the previous map, we decided to look into Manhattan Community Board 12 for heat and hot water being reported and how we can contextualize this with block parties transcript data. So we did a case study to see if the correlation existed between 301 service request data and the community board meeting transcripts. 311 service requests can either be short-term in nature, such as a noise complaint, or long-term, such as heat and hot water. Considering community board meetings are typically focused on more chronic issues within their neighborhoods, we decided to focus on a community board in Manhattan with a high number of service requests for heat and hot water. Manhattan Community Board 12, which includes Washington Heights, Hudson Heights, Fort George, and Inwood, and had 9,789 301 points for heat and hot water. And that's 50 plunk complaints per 1,000 for the population in that community board. And on the right-hand side, you can see a heat map of the distribution of heat and hot water complaints within that community board. So using the archive mode available on the Block Party website, we searched for the instances where issues around heat and hot water came up. There were a few key points that were made in the general community board meeting on January 25th after the recent tragic fire at the Bronx High Rise apartment. They mentioned, the city is not enforcing its own housing regulations, where the indoor temperature must be 62 degrees at night and 68 degrees during the day. The use of space heaters, ovens, and other appliances are not safe if used, not, if used improperly. In addition to no heat, the city must respond to insufficient heat as well because residents will also take potentially unsafe measures. Lastly, a, a community board member discusses how legislation can help ensure comfortable temperatures in all apartments and prevent future fires. People have to live, and, and I quote, people have to live in a better condition. And as long as it's cold, people are going to try to be warm. And that is always going to put them in danger. The following month, the community board set up a fire prevention workshop on February 25th, 2022, going through safety regulations around using appliances, electrical blankets, heaters, and other electrical equipment. And this is an example of using 301 service requests to act 
as a signal to dig through all the noise in the data to pull out a meaningful story and potential explanation to why heat and hot water in particular is being reported so frequently in a community board. And uh, this analysis took our team member a, a little bit over plus and minus an hour to do using the block party artifact, showing the power of that tool. And so this is thinking about like, how can block party be used by other organizations and be merged with additional data sets to gain insight? And we would love to connect, come join the party and sign up to stay updated on conversations happening in your community board or search through our archive mode for stories and insight. Thank you. And happy to answer any and all questions you may have. Or even just ideas for what you think Block Party should be doing next, or if, if you want to get involved in any way. I see a question. Can we use this data with council? What's exciting is that what we built is flexible for any meeting that's on YouTube or actually any video on YouTube. I've actually I've applied it to some of my lectures for class and I count how often I say and from that, and even I send it to my students so they can have exactly what I said. So we've applied this to other meeting types, such as I believe for like economic development, we have some city planning meetings on there too. So all we need is a YouTube channel and to have their meetings have closed captioning enabled, and we can start to grab all of those transcripts as well. So we've I think, started exploring how this could be used in other cities as well, but thinking there, there's really no limit to to what this could be applied to. It's more so, how would this information be used? Hi, Allison. It's good to see you here as well. I see you're in a there. Yeah, <laughs> good to connect again. I see your question, would we be interested in working within the community land trust movement to help with transparency and sharing of community perspectives? Definitely, we're open to collaboration and seeing where else this type of tool could be used. I'd be curious to hear more about that. Definitely. I'll follow up with you on that. I'll send an email. Sounds good. Thank you. And Jody, uh, I see your hand is up. Hi there. I just wanted to say I put it in the chat, but this looks like a really great tool. And as a community activist, it really gives a, a quick glance to see our community boards addressing the things that we're complaining to 311 about. One of the difficulties that I encounter is people don't use 311 or they don't go to community board meetings, or they do one and not the other. I am in those districts that have no data, but I, I think it also is a good tool to say that we need to record meetings to make them accessible, to have closed captioning. I am a person with a disability, so Zoom has been amazing for me, but I'm gonna use your website to say, look, this is if you did, this is what we could do and it would be more understandable to the community board members and the residents. So thank you for all the work you've done on this. It's, I'm very excited. That's really amazing to hear. Thank yeah. you very much for that feedback. We're really happy that this can be as of experience and helpful for you or for anyone to get more information on the community boards if they're not able to attend in, in various capacities to create more accessibility. And to the, the next question, uh, this is a very interesting project. Keep in mind that doing long complaints can represent squeaky wheels and don't always reflect where the need is greatest. Absolutely. The real ones are just one side or one facet of what is being reported in a community board or in a neighborhood. And they, and it's definitely not the, the most robust to capture everything. However, it is interesting to look at that comparatively to what is being discussed in a community board. And the interesting part is to our one of our previous slides of what other data set can we join to this conversation to get that full picture and to contextualize it further. So it's never just one data set, right, that contextualizes everything. It's like the combination of different pieces. And more importantly, we think that getting multiple stakeholders around the same table to have those conversations. It's the three in one, it's the Department of Health, it's the Department of, of Education, it's all those different pieces that come together to really identify community needs. Phenomenal project. I would say this is a great tool. I was just curious in terms of this data represents more of a issue presented or reported. Have you folks done any work in terms of when things get resolved by the and reported as a result? Some of these issues on 311 data. Is there like it's sort of you can overlay those data in terms of complaint filed as opposed to or and then resolution done or accomplished? Yeah, I think it gets really interesting if you were to start to, as a data scientist with experience in natural language processing, I'm thinking like, how could we start to develop models that could perhaps like identify these types of resolutions? And then you can start to create like a structured data set around that. Because the case study Brandon went through took like a manual approach of, okay, we see utilities in hot water, let's look more into this to be able to find that there was a resolution address. But perhaps using some type of 
natural language processing, we can systematically look for different like phrases of a resolution for this topic was discussed and perhaps starting to compare in that type of way. But I think, for, I don't know, do you have other ideas for, for how we can look on the resolution side rather than just complaints? Definitely. I, I guess we can connect later. I'm not, uh, I will uh, I'll try to find you or send an email. Definitely. And also I just wanted, I was just curious, what platform do you use for this, this tool? A lot of the, the work we did is using Python yeah. for the coding side. And then the, the platform itself, we just use like a website for hosting everything. Oh, excellent. No, that's so a fantastic with, tool. That's, that's, it's clearly fits into a lot of ideas that have been presented this week. And congratulations. Thank you. And I see, do we have thoughts on other data to pull in? Something that's gotten me excited and a little bit related to what we just discussed with Pravin, relating to different initiatives that are being started. So if you're really interested in sanitation, like I'm involved in the Health Kitchen Litter Legion, where they have different cleanups that happen on a monthly basis. But if you didn't know that existed and it gets discussed in a community board meeting, could we perhaps start to tease out some of these statements of there'll be a, a cleanup next month at this date? And we can then create like a structured data set. If you're interested in sanitation, but you could get an alert to know, hey, this is something that you might want to get involved with. So that's the thoughts on like other data to pull in of like getting more events or even thinking about representatives who come to these meetings and starting to document exactly what it is that they are discussing from their policies perspectives, because sometimes they come in and they have this soapbox and they say, these are all the things I'm doing, um, but maybe comparing that to like, how do they vote on those things too? So I'd be curious also, are there ideas for what other data we should start to pull in? Yeah, we, we've dreamed about, you know, at the top of each transcript, having that agenda, action items, what was voted on, what was the vote count? But like, there's so many way, additional data points we would love to, to put into it. Yeah, open to any and all thoughts on and ideas. So I see another question from Jody, if I'll answer that one. So 301 data includes when they close tickets, it's when the agency responds. It isn't a real resolution to the issue. Uh, yeah, I, I think, Sarah, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, even like, how do you define a resolution to like, mm -hmm. how do you know when it's actually fixed? Where like, I, we've even experimented using like sentiment analysis on some of the statements, looking at a case study of different like sidewalk sheds, because that's been a big, discussion and do community boards generally feel positively towards this or negatively? And how does that relate to different people who make like public comments about them? So I feel like a lot of these things are more fuzzy where there isn't like a finite, this was resolved and now everything is fine and dandy. But thinking about how we can contextualize that story through text, I think is really where Block Party would fit in there. Yeah, it's in a lot of these from like the urban doing like a lot of analysis on the urban macro scale, you're always modeling or simulating like an urban condition or trying to mimic it to, to understand it. But yeah, that the resolution, when I see that makes me think about if it says like the pothole was filled or we're trusting if the 301 service complaint has pothole filled, did it actually get filled? Like to get that, you know, boots on the ground information it is crucial to verify and validating a lot of these data sets that we find through open. And I'm sure that they will come over time as this movement continues to grow. I see a question, do we correlate Google Trends? Into the local data? Hugo, I'd be curious to know more. What do you mean by Google Trends? Okay, so I think Google has this thing called Google Trends where they track how often somebody is looking up a certain mm -hmm. subject, which one's more popular. So let's say Community Board 12 gets heating complaints. So do you correlate the data from something like Google Trends to see, hey, there's been a spike in searches of people looking for heating complaint? which may indicate people trying to find out how to complain mm. the city and may have some other uses. Yeah. Do you know if Google Trends can get a more granular search? Would it be to New York that's, specific? That's what I'm not sure about, but yeah. I was hoping that they have it. I think they have it by state level, definitely, because mm. I do see on the news every once in a while where they say, hey, the most popular search term for foods or types of pizza in New York versus New Jersey type of thing. So I'm hoping that it can be made more granular at the very least to a county level. Yeah, I see on the, I think that they go down to state, major metro, and then cities for their granularity, which is interesting. It's a very interesting idea to, yeah, compare Google searches, like an area's Google search compared to what's being discussed or reported in, in a community. And then you could check it against different languages because you could look up heating complaint in city yeah that it spikes up, let's say 50% during December. And then you compare that versus the Spanish language 
uh, version, calientamiento or whatever it would be. And then maybe you'll see there that that goes up 200% and you will get to compare how people are trying to find the appropriate information to resolve these issues. Yeah, definitely. I think even just having that information of you can use 301. I wonder if just like promoting different resources that people are looking into, what that would require for us to be a part of that. But I definitely will we'll look into the Google Trends. Maybe they can export some of that stuff too from Google. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback too. Oh, thank you for the hard work you've been doing. Oh, our, our pleasure. I just wanted to comment, Sarah, that in terms of 311 complaints, there are, it is a spectrum of how things get resolved. If even if it's just reported, agency who would take care of that complaint would be, it would be split into multiple agencies. It could be hmm. done right away, it could have a weeks at a time, or it could be months at a time, or it could be rolled into capital projects. So it's, it's a spectrum of solutions methods and it's not as simple. It made sounds. I just wanted to say I do work for a controls office and we look at, I look at in engineering terms and infrastructure projects. So we do look at these kind of things in terms of risk assessment, where things are happening. For instance, big problem in Queens, there are long-term projects that would alleviate those underlying issues, but same time, the instances of complaints, sometimes it has root causes that's on already on a uh, plan to be. Mm. Uh, so that, that these are just like a symptoms in some case, noise complaints or heat, hot water. If there are things happening in uh, housing authority buildings, if there's a gas rupture, gas pipe rupture, this could take weeks. And I think uh, there's a, in the newspaper, there are complaints that in, I believe in Manhattan, they have no gas for the last three weeks. So that is a, you know, form. I mean, that's very sad. Mm. At the same time, these kind of solutions require, do require a lot of court and a lot of work. So when you see the spikes, there are, there are underlying reasons. So there are the things that happen that we may not see just from the treatment. Definitely. I'm a, you know, always curious to learn more about how these things work too, because again, we're like applying our own kind of bias of saying these are topics, but really getting to talk to people who work with these things and how they get resolved. I think it is really where it all boils down to. So Thank, thank you for sharing all that. I would just add in for that. I also think people are concerned and interested in 311 response time in terms of closeout of response before the issue is actually resolved. I know in our community board, a lot of times the people will make complaints about trucks parked in their, in their residential areas after nine and the police will close out, say that the issue is not existing or not resolved, but you're still looking at it. So mm -hmm. they haven't actually come at all. So a lot of people just feel as though 311 in the end, it becomes a, a system that they think that is not worth their time because they don't see any reaction to it. So tracking like that, you know, how quickly those cases are closed out versus the condition actually being even looked at or assessed, let alone resolved, is something I would like to see. Yeah, it's interesting to think that I, in my building, I had issues with heat and hot water. And then when I called through in one, I filed the complaint or I online filed the complaint. I think it was the next day I got a call saying, is this resolved? And it wasn't. And then I got a call two weeks later as a follow-up asking if it was resolved. So picking back on the previous conversation with the temporal aspects of how these issues actually get resolved is there is time lags to like when things get reported, when they're resolved, when are resources available to allocate to, to tackle these challenges. And I think the way we, we imagine through on one, at least in this initial case study, was that it can act as a signal just to pay attention to. So we have the 900 or so transcripts. How could this information or, or other information be used to try to, you know, find a needle in a haystack? How can you use it to not necessarily find resolution or directly correlate one to another, but just help you inform which area is facing what potential challenges to ask those more pointed questions across different community boards. But I think still talking, um, what Jody mentioned too, of this underlying equity issue in 311 calls, I think that's just like, that's a bigger problem that, you know, solving with this, but I think would just take more, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking about how, what would fix that equity issue. My, my thought is generally of just having access to technology to know about these things, but what you're talking about of like trust of knowing that they get resolved. Yeah, it, it both. It's the, I was, I had my camera off. Good thing. I was laughing about the illegal parking. Like I've literally stood there, reported illegal parking, gotten the text confirmation, NYPD responded, there's no issue. And I'm like, I'm standing right here. Mm -hmm. But um, exactly. the, the 311 is, I'm working with my community board for this. 
that they don't do enough outreach to let people know that this is the mechanism to report things because a city agency can't respond if there's no ticket number. So the equity issue is partly trust, but also because people tolerate poor conditions in their community. And then they use 311 for the most, as you mentioned, the most urgent things like heating and hot water. And it would be really interesting to dive down and see how much of that is nature related and recurring. Yeah, I guess that's why I brought up technology. If you could have more of that transparency in the feedback loop, uh, what is it that they did to check it? And now, oh, it actually you know, wasn't resolved. Having more of that communication streamlined through some type of innovation, perhaps just to give that more, not just a one way you report it, but having a two way that has more kind of accountability could be interesting. Oh, accountability, that word no one likes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, uh, it would be great also because you can then when you go to the police department, when they come to the community board meetings and they tell you, oh, we definitely respond to every complaint that comes in. Then you have the data to back it up, to say, actually, you don't. And here's the evidence that shows that you have there's an issue with in terms of response to 311 and the actual work that, that you claim to have done at the same time. Yeah, definitely. And I, you know, encourage other tinkerers who want to build stuff too to try to address the need that you see. That's what we did with Block Party. And thank you all for, for attending our presentation today. We really appreciate your time and, and feedback and ideas and, and definitely would love to continue the conversation with some of the folks that we discussed. And even if, if you didn't speak up, we would love to continue the, the conversation as well.